Number 10 had been blocked from overruling the expansion of London's ultra-low emission zone after lawyers warned that it would be rejected by the courts. Cabinet ministers were considering a way to reject London Mayor Sadiq Khan's strategy if it was inconsistent with national policies. The ULA's expansion will widen to the whole of Greater London from next week, uh, charging a £12.50 daily fee across the capital. The London Mayor's scheme has met with backlash from politicians, including Labour, who felt that they lost their by-election seat in Uxbridge because of it. But Ulase is not the only city to be hit by a low emission zone with drivers facing penalty charges. Places like Aberdeen, Birmingham, Bristol, Dundee, to name a few. So it's not just London centric, this one. Uh, so should the government be looking to block ULES schemes? Now, um, I have a real expert on my panel with this one. Mike, this is one of your babies, isn't it? You really are passionate about this one. Thank you very much for calling me an expert on it. I don't claim to be an expert. I claim to be I did put it in fanatically comments, to be determined to try and make it never work, to see it never works, to see it scrapped. And the fact that the spineless government led by Rishi Sunak won't even go into bat for those millions of people whose lives are going to be displaced. Who's the uh, transport minister? A non-entity called Mark Harper. He won't even say, yes, we're going to tell, because you can tell him, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, to postpone the implementation of this scheme while we go and decide whether or not it's in the national interest, because it's not in the national interest. It, this is a money-making racket. That's all it is. It's a racket to try and bring funds into City Hall in London. It'll spread to other cities. But one case, for instance, of an old woman, which I came across, with an old car, she'll have to pay £12.50 every time she drives the car off her driveway onto a road to go and see her friends, to go to her bridge, club to go to lunch or to go shopping it's it's absolutely outrageous that this sort of demonic um, desire to stop people moving around and to charge them money if they do. Look, if the cars are that filthy in what they put out into the air, then why do you charge them £12.50 to drive them, take them off the road? I, I, I think, actually, to be fair, I think that's a fair point, Jenny, because it, it's the poorer people that are suffering again. You know, there is a scrappage fee where the government will give you... £2,000? £2,000. Try getting any sort of ULES compliant car for £2,000 and good luck with that one. Um, but, you know, Mike's got a point. You know, if... They were so worried about the pollution levels, just ban cars. But at the moment, you've got the really posh sports cars that cost thousands of pounds. Yeah. They're fine, and they can afford to pay the twelve pound fifty. They don't care. Absolutely, a Maserati. You know, when uh, you're paying twelve pounds fifty. I, I think so. you, I, you you can't just say ban cars because you know we need to adapt. And the whole point about the, this ULES scheme is we it is the beginning of trying to get people to adapt. This has been very poorly implemented. The scrappage scheme is badly done. Uh, there needs to be more money for people. You need to have uh, more carrot and, and less stick, really. Um, but the fact is, we need to change. We need to m be moving into more sustainable forms of transport. We need to be moving into cars that are less polluting. This affects one in 10 cars in the, in the, in the, new, in the new area. It, what a false does. statement that is. It's one in 10 across the whole of London, right? But it's about four in ten when you go out to the areas he's now trying to hammer I on the no edge, on this, the edge of this, Greater London. This scheme is really, really imperfect and needs to be better implemented. But the idea that the government should be stepping in and scrapping it—the reason why the government is talking about this in the first place—is because it's so happy that it didn't lose Uxbridge. <laughs> this is the last gasps of a yeah. desperate administration trying to cling on to I something that, oh, people like what we're saying. Yeah. Or, or, Je Jenny, or businesses will close down. A guy who came and fitted my new done. carpet a month ago, OK, is going to have to close down his business because his office is on one side of the border and his business shop, his warehouse is on the other, there OK? There should be more support for these people. So I'm just saying, certainly, I'm just saying. But so there got... should be a ULES scheme. We need to have lower emissions. There are people who are, who are dying of asthma. On, no, on no, road. that's not true. The it air, is true. The air is not filthy Speak. on the Borders on the orders, honestly, on the borders of Greater London and Did Surrey you? and Kent and, and Hertfordshire, the air is not dirty. Foreigners have found that people with asthma have no, died. That no, is a truth. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if, if anybody's clawing at those sort of facts, they are absolutely so the, the examinable. Children 
should be ignored. I, I live on the border of Surrey and Greater London. The air is beautifully clean. There are trees that synthesise the carbon dioxide in the air. I don't see anybody walking along near Epsom or places like that going... <laughs> I can't not breathe. Not necessarily you see people breathe. coughing. It's, it's people having asthma attacks in the middle of but night. But the air is very people clean. People with, with lung damage over a number of years. The idea that because there are trees where you live that yeah. there isn't air pollution. Just, right? to, put, yeah. just, to, give, just to give you... Oh, yeah. my God, it's going to explode. Even their, <laughs> even their official figures say the air will only improve in the long term by a maximum of 3%. And it's very clean air already. Very clean. The, the, the official uh, facts, according to a Lancet study, show London's low emission zones made no difference to children's health. And Queen Mary University of London uh, said that they had no evidence of you're, you're health benefits to children's You're reading that from a, a report in the Telegraph, which is quoting something from GB News. These are places that have I'm a very I'm sure they're specific... not making up. No, but I'm sure there are other studies that show that, I, it, that it does sure work. Are. Otherwise, the, 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 the mayor would be able to make absolutely no case at all. For it's this. a passionate debate, isn't yeah. it? Which so so why, why did the mayor then try, or the mayor's department, why did they try to reinterpret the report from Imperial College no about doubt, the quality of air? No doubt there's loads of spin there. I think politicians are, and, and their offices are, are full of spin. Nonetheless, we know that we need to move towards not having polluting vehicles. We know that. Our, and, and our, our vehicles don't pollute. Our, our vehicles don't no, pollute. No, they don't. Vi I, I promise you, vehicles in this country over the last 20 years have become so clean with the engines. Believe me, it's minimal. It is absolutely minimal. Well, there's a it's lot a of hot air going on racket. in this studio, isn't there? Racket. Thank you. He has it now exploded in the corner, by the way. Um, but what do you think about this? You've heard what Mike and Jenny said. Uh, let's go to uh, Dave in Hampshire. Good morning, Dave. Would you like to calm Mike or Jenny down? Which, which side are you on? You, Les, or, or should we ban it? Well, uh, good morning. Um, my background, I founded the Campaign for Air Pollution Public Inquiry in 2014 which was supported by 25 Lords and MPs, and a formal recommendation was made to the government for a public inquiry to scrutinise air pollution policies. Subsequent to that, no action has been taken, and the, the policies that have been implemented by Sadiq Khan are not evidence-based. I've provided technical evidence to Sadiq Khan and his team since before he was elected, showing that ULES won't reduce air pollution. We saw the Volkswagen emission scandal, which showed that the Euro emission standards don't actually reduce air pollution, and he's based the entire policy on that. It's completely flawed. It's a complete sham, and that's why you've seen the articles that he's tried to block scientific reports. It's a, it's a requirement of public law that Sadiq Khan's policies have to be evidence-based, and the government have got a statutory ability to address that with a public inquiry. If there was a train crash and people died, then there'd be a public inquiry. There should be a public inquiry urgently to scrutinise what he's doing because it's a complete sham. TfL receives $9 billion a year in public funds. They've got a huge de deficit. They're structured as a complex web of private limited companies with senior employees at TfL as direct. It's a completely improper structure. There's no accountability. And I believe the government is shirking its responsibility by not holding Sadiq Khan to account uh, and putting in place effective policies. Uh, Dave, are... sorry, Dave, did you, did you get any response from uh, the mayor's office when you put your findings to him? Have you had any comeback at all? Yeah, I have. He's blocked my email. Oh, so okay. Sadiq Khan, you know, claimed that I, um, you know, he didn't like what I was saying. I confronted him on LBC a few years ago about this. There's clear, unarguable technical evidence that scrapping older vehicles won't significantly reduce pollution by multiple sources, and that includes DEFRA reports and the Department of Transport. Okay, and yet no one. Dave, thank you very much. I mean, really strong points. I mean, the issue I have with this as well, uh, thank you for calling, by the way, Dave, is the fact that we've expanded the zone now to cover Heathrow Airport, where you've got jets thundering every two minutes, polluting, doing more pollution than cars ever can. It's, it's uh, anyway. Uh, Sharon, you are actually in London. Uh, good morning, Sharon. What would you like to say? 
Well, I would like to say I live in a, a le- little leafy suburb. I'm sitting here in my front room watching um, one car go by and I'm coming under the new ULA scheme. I, I, I really, you know, beggars belief that this is actually um, being put in place and that the government actually support it. But I'm not surprised that the government support it because it was actually put in place by Boris Johnson. He announced on Tuesday, the 26th of March, 2015, mm-hmm. um, the introduction of the world's first ultra low emission zone. So we're just following on from that. That's, you know, um, and I don't believe that the Conservatives will take a U-turn on it. Well, Grant Shapps, oh, to be fair to Boris Johnson, I'm just giving plain devil's advocate, he introduced it for central London. Exactly. Grant Shapps suggested it, that it would be expanded, but obviously Sadiq Khan doesn't have to do that. Um, so it's, it, yeah, it is confusing politically, isn't it, Mike? I mean, you well, are... Well, it is confusing, but look, I have no objection to the central London policy whatsoever, because we all know that that, that the streets are crowded together, heavy lorries, you know, delivering goods, all that kind of stuff. So there's a right and a a reason to do it, but not out in Greater London, not in these lovely towns like Bromley and and, and, and Sutton and and Enfield and places like that. We don't have to, yeah. We are talking... It's a racket. We're talking London here a lot, obviously, because this is what this, this government case was based on. But obviously, bear in mind, it does affect other cities around the UK as well. And, you know, it, what happens here will probably... If it's inevitably. Not already got it, absolutely inevitably. It will become to you. Uh, not quite sure about Devon, though. Sally, you're in Devon. What would you like to say? Well, um, I've just found out, just heard on your programme that it um, obviously affects um, Heathrow Airport. Well, if I decided to drive up to Heathrow Airport, obviously I will have to pay the £12 um, tax. Yeah. Um, Perhaps it, our county council, it would be a great idea. I think we should have it in Devon. Oh. Everybody who comes into Devon should, from outside of Devon, should have to pay this twelve pound tax. Why? If you if you live here already, it wouldn't affect you. But everybody who comes from outside could should have to pay this twelve pound tax. Sally, we could Sally. fix all our roads. I was it gonna would say, be Sally, a this wonderful is... money making idea. This yeah. is a money. I mean, so the ways... roads have been paid for by central government. How dare this person think he can charge charge us twelve pounds for using roads that have been paid for by my taxes, your taxes, everybody else. Absolutely. Sally, you've you've put your finger on, on, on the button here. In certain parts of the country, it would be ludicrous to have any sort of ULA scheme. Devon's got wind that blows from one side of the county to the other and takes everything away. But the problem is, and, and you've highlighted this, is that if it starts in London, it spreads. When we first had congestion charges in London, Durham suddenly said, that's a good idea. I think we'll um, make a two pound charge to drive into Durham. What happens? Where it starts, it grows and grows and grows. It becomes a pernicious tax and it's a racket. It's a money-making racket. Do you think the congestion charge is a bad thing in London? I think the congestion charge needs examining massively to find out what it was supposed to do and what it's done. And what it hasn't done is stop people driving into London. So what was the purpose of it in the first we place? We need to disincentivise people using... But it hasn't, it hasn't Jenny, though, has it? It yeah, hasn't. I mean, most, a lot, most private... Vehicle owners don't drive into central London anymore. Well, yeah. no, nobody hasn't significantly altered the volume of traffic in central London. I think I remember what it was like beforehand, and I think it has eased things. Yeah, we, well, I think it has. Let's, well, the we're, figures we're, don't say that. We're still going to talk about you, Liz. Sorry. We move, we, we want to go off topic here. So let's go to another caller from London. Callie, you're in London. Are you pro extension of the ULEs or against it? Sorry, against it. Morning, everybody. Morning. It, but technically, this is just a, a t- attack on the person, people who are financially unfortunate and also the retired. People are having to change their roadworthy cars uh, for, for a £12.50. If they don't do it, they're going to end up paying £12.50. I mean, I've got a decent car, which is MOT compliant, does exactly what I needed to do, but I'm having to change it. So it doesn't really affect the people who are well enough to or have the money to go buy a new car. And in reality, this is just another... I don't know if you guys remember back in the day, the poll tax, which was induced by the Conservatives, mm. is a poll tax on cars, in reality. It's charging people um, to, to exist. So, yeah. so, so, in effect, the, and the Conservatives have got no interest in cancelling this because well, uh, they want it. Hallie, and Labour want it as well because... Yeah, true. 
Calendar. No, it's only reality. The, the Labour wants it as well, so they'll roll it out in London and it'll be everywhere and anywhere. So I think Labour have technically sh- shot themselves in the foot. So, Khaled, when, when Rishi Sunak said the other week that he was on the side of the motorist, you're not having that, are you, really? No, no, he's, he's totally BSing in, in reality. He's, 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 he's just he's, he's drumming the drums that everybody wants to hear, but in reality, he's got no interest in doing anything. They want people to pay... Uh, a road tax, a driving tax, a pay-per-mile tax. Because the London ULEZ, the website is London uh, London Road Charging or something, something along those lines, right, not yeah. ULEZ, it's tagged with something else. London right, Cal- Cali, thank you so much for your call. Thank you for all your calls on that. Wow, that was passionate, wasn't it?